Friday, July 21st, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Hey, it's 9.50 California time, just slightly after the exact middle of the trading day. I always start out with the indexes, um, Spider, DIA, Qs, Russell 2000 frequently. So here comes the Spider daily vertical bar chart. We've, oh, everybody knows at this point, of course, we bottomed out on October 13th with a gigantic ER buy signal. And we have been overbought for the last few days, except today, uh, we seem to be starting to get out of that condition, but not quite yet. I'm looking at a slight rally at the moment, up 60 cents is nothing to speak of, and it is... Uh, lower than where it opened. So we may be about to see new lows for the day. It's only half over. It's the end of the week, Friday. Sometimes we get some significant things developing on beginning of a weekend. People don't necessarily like to stay with positions over the weekend, unless, of course, you're a long-term investor, then it doesn't matter. Now, uh, let's look quickly at the, I don't, I'm not finished with the daily. We rallied up into a major significant resistance area, that blue zone here, just during the middle of this week. It stopped at the resistance area and in overbought condition. There is a gap to close below the market in the ballpark of 444. That's exactly where I think the market's going to go to very quickly next week. I think we started last day or two. If I am wrong, we are going to close above Wednesday's high, uh, which is, was 456.50-ish. So from here, I'm risking a few points. But the downside is 10 lower, approximately 11, um, 9 in that ballpark. And there's a possibility of it slipping a little bit more than that. I wouldn't be terribly surprised if it was down in the high, very high 430s. So 444 down to the very high 30s. So, so far so good. Even though I'm up 75 cents at the moment, I still think it's going to slip off some more. Here is the one minute chart giving you a better picture of today so far. Big down day yesterday. Opened higher this morning came down and closed a little opening gap from, you know, unchanged. Popped back up again, could not and did not make new highs at this point, and has been chewing away at lower lows for a few hours. But if we start to get below today's lows at this point, we will then be pretty close to the uh, low yesterday. And if that is broken, we, again, it's pretty close by end of the week, maybe a quick break on the close. That would be another, gosh, less than a point. We could be uh, dropping quickly at the very end of the day. I think that's possible. Next chart is the daily S&P again. We're finished with that. Daily DIA has the same significant reasons to believe it's going to drop down and close some gaps or at least back to support. Remember, this is not a bearish situation. Really, it is a minor downside technical correction in a bull trend. They all they always happen. You've got to figure out where and when and how much and so on. Now, there's a gap to close in the DIA. And that gap would be closed at, uh, let's call it 350, almost exactly. Uh, the high the day before the gap was 349.91. So yeah, 350. And maybe it'll stop there and turn back up again. We're only at 52 and a half right now. So it's not that far away. And we're only up 12 ticks. Nothing below where it opened around the middle of the range of the day. I still think we could slip more here. Here's the one minute chart on the DIA. It's very similar to the S&P. You would expect that. Sometimes they are weirdly, definitely different, but not today. Except that the Qs are the weakest of the group. It opened smack dab at the high, dropped off to around unchanged and really didn't recover. Got a little higher on the day and now we're back down a third of a point. Now that's not a lot, but look at this. The low 20 minutes ago or so and earlier this morning and yesterday are almost the same. A minor little tiny support area developing past tense. If that's broken, kaplunk, 
I think we'll drop off another uh, chunk real quick. And for the QQQ, dropping off a little bit more starts to close already. The highest gap we had a little over a week ago. It almost closed part of it yesterday, but stopped at the top of the gap area. Let me get it in a little tighter for you here. And I found that pretty interesting. So it's holding at yesterday's lows at the top of the gap. It could punch through easily. The first gap is closed if it gets down to 374.20. But there's another one. And that's one I also favor as being reached 368.60. I expect we'll be closing this gap, the second lowest of the two. Not that far away, actually. Another day like yesterday would, would maybe do the job completely, both gaps. I don't think that's going to happen today, but end of the week, close to the lows, chewing away at things. Now, the support area, a really good one, starts at 360. So somewhere between 368 and change and 60 is uh, definitely an area that I would be looking for buy signals, period, is there anything particularly interesting about the 2000 today, Russell? Besides being down 37 cents, very little. Uh, it did bump away at two bearish resistance lines. And that was Tuesday's high. Wednesday it came through a little bit and dropped off yesterday. And today we're still down a little bit on the day net. So easily making new lows lower than yesterday. And maybe even for most of the week. There's a gap to close down here. I think that's a little too far away. I'm not too sure about that for the Russell. But between 489 and uh, I said four, 189 and 180 is the range. And I favor the high side of it in general for it to turn around and go back up. Futures, futures, futures. You know, as a futures broker for 35 years. Here we go. The first futures contract I want to show you is the bond market. I've started to show this to you every single day from approximately, I think it was about July. We'll just call it the beginning of July. A few days before, the 88-day cycle low right on time. I can't believe it. Almost every day I've gone through the last several cycles, covering a few years that have been extremely accurately on time. And today being Friday, I suppose I have to do it again. I don't want you to see this. Um, just a second. So I'm going to uh, shift everything to the left two bars. There we go. This green bar is the 10%. So 5% to the left and 5% to the right of the middle of the bar is the window of opportunity. This is where we're expecting to see the market to turn back up the cycle low time frame. I'm just choosing 10%. You can change it to whatever percent of the time you like. We have lots of controls up here to do a whole variety of things. But let's, let's look at these green bars. Bingo. On the money. On the money. On the money with a green ER buy signal on top of that. On the money. In the green. On the money. Not a bad place to be a buyer, but it wasn't the lowest low. We missed it. This is not so good, and the cycle doesn't work quite as good as it was for the first six or seven times that were unbelievably accurate. But now... Yeah, medium, I'd say that didn't really work. And there was room for a little tiny profit here, but again, the hard way. Fantastic. What a, you know, I'm already back to um, January of 20, showing you those cycles. All right, so let's go. The other futures, E-mini, always look at first for the futures contracts it's the same except for the trading hours make it provide different kinds of signals the patterns are almost always the same but uh, daily signals sometimes can change because of the longer trading hours next chart is the bond market we just discussed i am very bullish on interest rate futures uh, next major support area resistance sorry uh, is about 129 and then if we can get above 135 it's going to be screaming bullish long term. Next, same kind of commentary, except the numbers are different for the 10 year notes. Significant resistance starts basically at 114 and a half ish. But if you can get above 118, rocket time. Next, crude oil had come up a little more than expected, but got overbought a couple of days, a few days ago. Looks like it's trying to make new highs again. 
Remember, we got stuck for quite a long time between these two red bars, horizontal lines, and that would be 82 and a half ish and um, 71 and a half. So right now at 76, you're kind of in the middle. As a chance you can get as high at 82 and a half. Um, that is a very likely spot for it to stop rallying, especially if you can get overbought getting up into that area like we had last time, like we had the time before that. Next chart, I'm bearish on energies in general. Heating oil is now overbought for the for last two days. It did break a major bear trend line. That's not necessarily a real bullish sign, but you, people should be aware of those things. We are still in a very, very broad trading range that happened uh, starting in May of, uh, what was that, 22. We have picked the highest high or very, very, very close to three out of three for these major turning points with the ER bear signals. We're primed for another signal if we can get an outside down day. We got the overbought. Watch out. I think it is about to turn down very soon and not much higher. Next, natural gas. A couple of sell signals had a minor profit potential for a couple of days. Nothing to write home about. That's what this one's okay. That was pretty good. And that buy signal was very good too for a week. So I am looking for the downside move below 2.4 and then the challenge 2.2 and Tierra del Fuego, land of south, uh, fire actually, but that's the next southern, that's a nickname for southern, southern tip of South America. Long story. No, no time. Yes, today, excuse me, yesterday in silver as well, we had a bearish engulfing ER cell signal that is in the process of working very nicely. Remember, every time you see red or green, uh, we are long or short ER1 transactions and never miss the green or red uh, signal day. But ER3 would like to get a percentage retracement and get into what might be a less loss if we're wrong and more of a profit if we're right uh, short position for red signals. We just missed it by a little bit so far, but we have two more days of chance. But it looks like this is just taking off, going south right away. How about silver? Same thing for silver. We have an outside down day yesterday, taking off to the downside, new low. Looks like a new low close. It's just plain working so far. Next. And I'm looking for new lows for a few months. Uh, both of them. Platinum. Got overbought, didn't have a bearish engulfing, unfortunately. Touched the previous bear trend line. That was a good spot to turn around. I think I said so, right smack dab at that spot, if I remember correctly. I mean, if it's if the setup is great and it just hasn't started to work correctly, does that mean you're going to shut the heck up until it starts to work and you're too late to get in? Not me. Next. Um, bounced off for resistance nicely. Uh, almost a new low close, not quite. I think it has a good chance of making some more lows today and closing at the low of the whole week and the beginning of, toward the end of last week too. Bearish, high-grade copper, looking for a minimum downside move of 3.6. That's to test that low uh, June 29th. And then to test the low at 3.55 or 3.56. Next chart, soybeans. Well, my very broad, historically possible double top formation got scratched up. We have a new high for the last week or so, got overbought, and it's starting to slip back down. Now, I would have loved, and there's still a chance, to get a giant red bearish engulfing, but I had one, it didn't work, and they sometimes cluster, I keep saying. I have seen as many as about four of them in a single month. And that would be bullish or bearish. Usually one of the two, three, or four uh, is the highest high or lowest low for the trend up and down. I picked the turning point, as you've already seen a bunch of. And in here, that's the green bottom right smack on the low day there as an example in soybeans. Um, well, that's, that's about it for the moment. So there's a chance that this is a very broad, historically important double top but it's waning you know i don't want to i got to see a new high to get out of that possible double top story or it keeps slipping then we've got something going from a very very long-term perspective next chart is bean oil 
already topped out, has been trending lower, minor new high for the moment, close to being overbought again. That'd be a third time if it gets there, and it's very close. I think it's about to top out and very suddenly drop off to get below probably 58.12, uh, maybe only taking a day or two to do it real quick. Next, soybean meal did top out this week on Wednesday with an overbought condition, a round resistance, good, and is now the lowest low for the three previous days and almost four days back. So I'm expecting a test of the lows of 364 and making new lows after that. Next chart is corn. Kind of the same commentary here. Trend is down. Breakouts didn't hold up. New lows were made. A rally that didn't, I think is over now, didn't do any major damage to the long-term bear trend. So I'm looking for a test of the lows of 473 and lower. Wheat, hey, same thing. Resistance area tested and an overbought condition yesterday, single day, one day overbought, turned it around so far, and we're down a pretty decent break here. Was that 20, 20, 29 cents, 30 cents? Not bad. Um, so this is topped out, I think, and it's going to challenge 621, I expect, and start to make new lows for the whole damn trend down since we sold the high day at the beginning of the war back on march 8th one of the unbelievable signals that we get every once in a while using this technique next chart live cattle bear signal yesterday looking very good so far okay not great i'd love to close below yesterday's low but anything down is obviously good because of the signal that we had yesterday now, I can't say this is really clustering, but we had two signals that were okay for a few days, not great back then. But this combination of stuff um, really gives me a little bit of an impression, not yet, don't, you know, don't come to the conclusion yet, that we may be seeing a longer term top being built, but it's too premature uh, to talk about that much. Next chart, uh, hogs, a <clears throat> uh, little bounce back up, failed yesterday. That was it this morning open a little higher and starting to pull back down. Uh, I'd love to see it close below this week's low. That's about 80.50. And then we're probably past tense topped out. <coughs> that would be a, a modest support area. So closing below that would be a little bit more convincing about the next major leg down to challenge the lowest low that we saw back in, eh, what was the date on that oversold condition? May 26, next chart. OJ. Well, my little story in the last couple of weeks, I abandoned already about four days ago, and that was a possibility of a head and shoulder top. It was looking pretty good there for a few days, but this screaming bull move is exactly what you do not want. And it's not only made a, an attempt to make a new high for the whole damn trend, but it did do it point blank today. So it screamed through the previous Wednesday, Thursday high, which were at the previous tops. And this is just plain bullish as heck long term. Unfortunately, on a short term basis, it is way overbought. So we're probably going to come back at least to 290. And I'm guessing you'll be buying a break that would be maybe a very good buying area at about 276. 276. Next chart is Coco. Um, this is a bull trend, a bull market. It's not stopping. We're not overbought yet. You're making new highs periodically every couple of days, every couple of weeks. Uh, buy downside retracements. If we can get back down to about 3. Uh, 3,276, uh, I'd look to be a buyer, but I, I would love to have a signal. Nothing yet. Looking for new highs either right away or very soon after a little dip down. Next chart, cotton the rag. Very boring. We've managed today, how about that? To come back up almost exactly to a previous rally high. And it is the highest high for almost all of this year since uh, February looks like. Obvious a resistance line. Stopped on the rally this morning, second day in a row overbought and is now trading almost unchanged. Closing lower would look a little bearish if it completely nosedived and got below yesterday's low, 
we would have a bearish engulfing ER cell signal, and I'd be very enthusiastic that this resistance area stopped at cold and that we we're going to be challenging and then probably breaking the support levels that have developed since the beginning of the well, late last year. But I'm not, I haven't got the signal yet. All I got is overbought and at a little resistance, and maybe it's going to come right back down to 76 again. Next chart is sugar to sweet. Start, still at that major uh, previous bull trend line underneath it or right at it for all practical purposes, getting pretty close to overbought. I think this rally is about over and it's going to stop very soon in time and pretty close in price and turn down to challenge at least 2180 and then come down to the significant support area, 2030 area, next and last coffee. We had a couple of bullish engulfings did not work. Market still seems like it's trying to bottom out. This is a new high by a squeak for a couple of weeks and a new high closing price, but not above previous highs. So it's not necessarily a breakout. It could lead to one on Monday. Um, no comment. It could be turning bullish. And back to the mini, I'm going to touch on Forex, which I don't often do because we've had some very interesting developments. Today, is the day after yesterday's bullish engulfing buy signal in the US dollar Swiss franc. New buy signal. Last time we got a signal was a sell signal there, red, red, not, not good. It was a buy signal, didn't work, small loss. That was a little bit of a profit, really can't write home about that. But these two signals are bearish on the top of the rally and bullish at the bottom of a big rally at the bottom of the break, the beginning of a big rally. Well, we'll see if this one works really good, but there's more to come. U.S. Canadian dollar had a bullish engulfing a couple of weeks ago, now potentially forming a double bottom. Watch out for that. No signal in the last day or two. Japanese dollar yen, uh, we got a buy signal on the exact low. And that was on July 14th. And it has been working very nicely since then the retracement for er3 happened we're long on the bottom of a dip and one day from the lowest low of the whole break and the beginning of this rally which is now pretty darn good next symbol is euro dollar i wish we had gotten a sell signal up here we were overbought but we didn't we did get some buy signals very close to this bottom a couple of sell signals a little premature and of course, we got the signal at the bottom of the euro dollar for the end of a multi-year bear market and the beginning. I remind you that signal was way back on September 28th of 22. The beginning of this bull move, which just in the last week or so has made the highest highs going back all the way for about a year. Yeah, a little over a year. Euro is heading higher. Much to my chagrin, I'd like to see it at par or lower. I'd like to go when I get a chance. So um, you expect to see the exact opposite on the DX. And we did get a sell signal September 28th to 22, smack dab on top. Nothing else for that. What about the uh, Aussie to the dollar? Nothing recently except overbought at resistance, right smack where my cursor is. Euro to the pound couple of people I know will be in London, one of them now and another one, my daughter, in a month, a couple of months, uh, semi-business trip. Hmm. Nothing here. Now, lastly, real quick, sectors. Uh, I've only got about five to mention. Sell signal yesterday, the metal and mining index. Hey, I just got a sell signal in gold and silver proper. It lines up perfectly. All three of these are going to work great if one of them works, the rest of them are, probably. Next, we got very close to the bottom back on June 6th for the Spider Retail, but it's having a little trouble at the moment. XLV, overbought, looking for it to turn back down, but we got the exact low days, May 31st. ITB is the... Housing con uh, construction index yesterday, bearish engulfing ER sell signal implies that the housing construction industry is going to be in a little bit of a problem. That's what that implies. 
This index looks like it's about to head south with a complementary home builders index for the spider having a, another bearish engulfing yesterday. This is a brand new signal. We'll see how they pan out over time. You guys have a great weekend. See you on Monday.